folks. Welcome to our bathroom remodel project. This is going to be a series of videos as we remodel this bathroom. The house we're in is only about six to eight years old and the bathroom that was here uh, was just kind of your basic run-of-the-mill contractor grade uh, bathroom. Nice, no doubt. Had a nice tile floor, had a tile surround, um, but we're going to upgrade it a little bit with uh, a large format tile and some other nice, uh, nice fixtures. So as you can see, we've done the majority of the demo. We're going to rebuild this bathroom to include a new bathtub, nice cast iron bathtub, a nice tub surround, a large format tile tub surround, as well as a nice uh, matching uh, floor tile. We'll also install a brand new vanity. And the toilet that was here is in perfectly good shape. So no sense uh, buying a new toilet. We're gonna reuse that toilet. So I hope you stick with us and see this project through to the end with us. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is install the bathtub. And we've got the bathtub turned up on end here. So we can go ahead and build the drain for the tub. Now, the, it's also the, the drain and the overflow that we'll be putting together. And we just picked up a, um, a kit at our local uh, hardware store. Makes it real simple. Uh, all put together with compression fittings and fully adjustable for a variety of different uh, tub sizes and designs. So you just uh, build your drain and overflow. Get it as close as you can. And then get your lower drain and your upper drain fitted pretty close to what you're gonna need. Now, because of the easy to adjust compression fittings, once you're getting ready to install, you can slide these you know, up and down, fore and aft, to make those fine adjustments. Okay, let's go ahead and put our tub in place. Honestly, that was a little easier said than done. As you'll see, we have a little bit of trouble getting our 60-inch bathtub fit into the same space that a 60-inch bathtub was removed from. We measured it out, and sure enough, we only had about 59 and 3 quarters inches to play with. And part of our problem is the drywall there on the left side, and we sure don't want to go to the trouble of tearing down all that drywall, only to have to replace it. So. We came up with a little idea here just to notch out those two by fours. They are non-structural. They're just framing in the bathtub and that little wall there. We're gonna cut those out with a series of kerf cuts, just parallel cuts that later I'll go back and chip away with a chisel. I'm gonna cut in about a good inch, maybe inch and a quarter to make sure we got plenty of room to play with to get our tub in place without damaging it. And with our notch cut, we are able to easily slide the tub into place. But as we'll see in a moment, our challenges with this tub install are not over yet. It turns out that this tub is a good two inches wider than the previous tub. So we have to cut away a little bit of the plywood subfloor which is no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and, with the tub in place, scribe a line with my Sharpie. And yeah, we'll have to pull the tub out of place. And then I'll do a plunge cut with my circular saw. Cut that straight line. A Little bit more chisel work. Remove a couple of screws. And then the tub should finally fit into place nicely.
and we'll use a pry bar to pull that scrap piece of wood out of place. At this point, we want to mix up some mortar for the underneath of our tub bottom to sit in, just to ensure it doesn't move around. And you want this mortar mix to be a little bit more loose than what you would for tile setting. And at this point, the battery on my camera died. I'm sorry about that, folks. Now, you're going to pour that mortar into place. Just enough, just a puddle. You want it to be able to grip the waffling underneath the bottom of your tub, just to ensure it doesn't slide around. Now, with one guy holding up the back of the tub, slide it into place and set that waffling down into the mortar bed. Then we'll check it for level. And we're looking pretty good. And this is a shot of the level lane on the floor of the tub. Not really required, but I wanted to make sure that we had enough fall to ensure it drained properly, and sure enough it does. Now, use a couple of large washers and some deck screws, and we'll secure our tub in place. Next up, we'll be connecting our tub drain and overflow. And for the drain, we need to ensure a watertight seal by using plumber's putty. Aiden will grab a hunk of that putty, work it between his hands to kind of form a plumber's putty snake, if you will. And then he'll place that plumber's putty around the tub drain where the drain flange rests against the porcelain. And this will ensure it's watertight. Now these next few video clips were not easy to get, but I wanted you to see what's going on underneath the tub. So I'm back in the crawl space. I've only got a few inches really to work. And so I've fit the drain to just about where I need it. I'm putting that rubber gasket on. And then up top, Aiden is going to lower the tub drain into our pipe and then he'll just loosely secure it by threading it into the pipe. Now with that loosely secured I'm going to go ahead and get that compression fitting adjusted and I'm just going to make that finger tight right now. I'll go back later and tighten that down to ensure it's watertight. I want to leave a little bit of play in our pipes here because I still need to fit into place and secure the tub overflow drain. So I'm going to get the compression fitting just about where I need it. And then get that overflow into place. That looks pretty good. Now I need to fit the gasket on the back side of the tub. This ensures that watertight seal that of course we need. And then from the front side, Aiden is going to secure the overflow drain with the hardware that's provided. Okay, now with the tub drain and the overflow drain in place, it's time to tighten down our compression fittings to a watertight seal. Now, these are hand tightened as tight as you can get them. I don't recommend using any kind of pliers or anything because you can overstress these things and crack them. Now Aiden is going to secure the tub drain with that special wrench and again he's going to tighten that with his hands only up into a certain point and then really only about another turn maybe a turn and a quarter with the help of a screwdriver for leverage but you got to be real careful here folks because that porcelain is delicate and if you over tighten this you'll shatter it it'll crack so be careful once he has that tightened down we'll go ahead and remove that excess plumbers putty that's squeezed out and we'll give the tub a leak check and sure enough we are watertight. Alright 
right, folks, well, with the bathtub installed, the next step is to install the concrete board on the floor in preparation for the floor tile and the concrete board around the shower or bathtub for the tile surround. Also included in that video is going to be the complete waterproofing of the shower surround as well as a little bit of the floor area just to ensure that no water ever seeps through the floor and damages the ceiling below. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos on our bathroom remodel as well as to ensure that you're included in the free giveaway for the book train. So thanks a lot for watching this video folks. On any of your projects that you have, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to get back to you. Best of luck on all your projects, and we'll see you back here next time on Do and Brew. Take care, folks.